Hey guys, welcome back to Objective Reviews. Uh, my name is Nick and this is the AMA and giveaway video. So let's get right into it. Okay, the first question we have is from Dhruv Dutt Zadav and he asks, my best and worst experiences with a Hackintosh. All right, let me start off with the worst experience. Uh, it is not technically the worst, but it is quite nightmare inducing. And that is getting my Hackintosh that you see right here. Yeah. And that is on the X99 platform. Now, previously Apple uh, shipped with the X79 platform on the Mac Pro, the trash can version. And then with the new iMac Pros, they are going with X299. Uh, so it kind of makes sense from Apple's perspective. But because the X99 platform got skipped completely, there's no need of support for any of those things. And because of that, I've been on the X99 platform since day one. And just last week, I finally managed to get native sleep awake features working properly on this system. And yeah, so I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, starting next year, I'm gonna slowly start migrating things over to High Sierra. And I'm not at all excited about that. My best experience with the Hackintosh or the Hackintosh aspect in general has got to be uh, the out-of-the-box support for platforms like the 97 chipset, the 170 and the 270 chipsets from Intel and you just plug in it. Installing the OS is as simple as installing Windows on it. And that is the smaller part about the good thing about this. The bigger part is all the fantastic communities that are revolving around the Hackintosh projects and most notably the Tony Mac x86 project and their multi-beast tool, as well as some fantastic people like KGP33, Stork, uh, Tony Mac himself, Piker Alpha, and a lot of others who make this experience a lot of fun and also a learning one. But one thing I would like to say is that if you have been diagnosed with heart problems, do not indulge in this because it's a game of patience and a lot of long nights and it's not gonna be particularly good on your heart. Rishabh asks my favorite gear of, no, my favorite audio gear of 2017. Okay, simple answer. Uh, out of the things I own, the Rode NTG2, uh, which right here, it's right there, that I'm using to record audio right now. And by far, it is one of the best purchases I made. I got this on the 5th of January this year. And since then, you guys may have noticed that the audio quality on my videos has significantly improved. Sometimes gear does matter and my previous way of recording audio for these videos wasn't all that great. However, I also had the chance to try the NTG4 on a separate commercial project and uh, the audio engineer on site had set these uh, two NTG4s up in stereo and that was hooked on to my also Mini and that was a whole new level of experience. These microphones are just fantastic. Out of the things I don't own, the Zoom H4n Pro has been on my Amazon wish list for a while. I was hoping someone would gift it to me on Christmas, but that hasn't happened yet. And Christmas is still a day away, so my fingers are crossed. Gorang asks, Marvel vs DC. <laughs> Let me know which one you thought it was. And finally, Tech Telegulo asks, what to look for in a DSLR camera before buying? Okay, now uh, this is a very fantastic, very often occurring question that I see on AMAs a lot. And I see people asking this a lot. And a lot of people seem to, you know, give a very focused answer like by A or B. But the answer is a little more tricky than that. Uh, let me get into the details quickly. You have to understand that the choices for DSLRs have to be segmented into three different levels and that is your entry level, your consumer, mid-consumer level and your prosumer level. And in that you have your full frames, obviously not in the entry level, but you have your full frame uh, DSLRs and your crop frame DSLRs from Nikon and Canon and whoever else. And then in those segments you have further segmentation based on what those particular DSLRs need to do. Some DSLRs are fantastic for their low light performance while others are great for macro photography and um, astrophotography and what have you. So 
given all this segmentation you need to ask yourself what kind of content am I going to be shooting irrespective of photos or videos uh, you need to ask yourself what kind of content you're going to be shooting and then decide okay since I'm going to be shooting a lot of documentaries and headshots maybe this is the camera that someone suggested and I should go for it or maybe I'm going to be shooting a lot of product photography or product video and this is the kind of camera that I'm going to be going into so that should help you narrow down your choices until you're finally left with one in a best case scenario or two in a okay ish scenario if you get one fantastic that's the one you need to buy if you come down with two uh, you'll probably end up picking the better of the two evils but the alternative to DSLRs are these new breed of mirrorless cameras Sony's A7R 3 and then the A7S 2 and all these cameras are wonderful Panasonic's GH4 and GH5 also fall in the same line and they are truly fantastic cameras they are compact and they fit in smaller spaces so that is something you can consider as well uh, and Sony's color science is pretty great but you do need to keep in mind that it's not as great as uh, Canon's 5D Mark IV or the C200 Mark II and all these other cameras and cameras from Blackmagic or Red or Arri and it's never going to match those levels but that is something to get you started nonetheless if you wanted to have your question in here and forgot about the whole AMA thing or you didn't know about it you can still leave your questions down below and I will take those up in the next AMA video just tag them with hash AMA and I will pick those up and last but not least uh, I remember that I forgot to announce the winner so the winner for the December giveaway is did that sink? no it did not sink the winner is wait let me check I have to check it's on my monitor it's on my monitor it's right here and it's Dhruv Dutt Zadav congratulations man uh, I've already sent you an email if you're watching this or you've probably already replied back to me and everything has been sorted but if you haven't go check your inbox you should have an email from me check it out follow the instructions and a big thank you to everyone who participated in the giveaway a big congratulations to the winner and i wish you all the best for the next giveaway i'm so glad we get to end the year on such a cheerful video like this one happy holidays to you your friends and your family members and i wish you all a very very happy new year i'll see you in the next one cheers